Caleb here, and in this video, I wanted to talk about subconscious set points and what they are, because it is important to know what these are so that you can possibly see where you may be self-sabotaging in your own life. So first, let me explain what a subconscious set point is. So a subconscious set point is in something that is built within your identity, and when something comes along to sort of challenge that, we find a way to self-sabotage and keep that thing away. So let me give you a real life example. Um, I know somebody uh, in real life, not too well. I don't know them super well. It's um, a friend of a friend. And this person um, very much has two strong subconscious set points. So like my video that I made recently talking about limerence, limerence is a huge thing that this person um, partakes in because this friend of a friend was suffering from great limerence towards my close friend. So limerence is one thing. And then um, a poverty mentality, a poverty identity is the other thing. Now, I want to make something very clear really quick that this is not about beating yourself up or making fun of someone. Remember, whenever we build these identities, these subconscious set points, we did this in order to ensure our survival. So don't ever beat yourself up for building something in order to survive a past environment. It's just about learning to recognize it and let it go and start to change it. So this person has uh, major limerence issues with one of my close friends. And this person has had these limerence issues for years with my friend. And um, also has issues when it comes to money because of growing up in poverty. So, and this is something that happened recently. I want to give you a real life example. So recently, that friend of a friend actually ended up sabotaging his friendship with my close friend. And they were close with, for, they were friends for years. And finally, my friend just couldn't take it anymore. And, you know, so this person, he sabotaged the friendship because it reinforces, right? At the subconscious level, he doesn't want love because love isn't safe. And then recently, uh, this person, um, he was promoted to a manager at a job that he had. And what happened was he kept that job for a couple of weeks and then he walked out on it. And remember how I talked about earlier the poverty mentality? Um, he definitely was not living his best quality of life because of his childhood that he grew up with. Um, you know, escaping a cult and that type of stuff. And, you know, he just lived a very impoverished life. And again, this is not about, you know, material things. You need material things to be valuable, nothing like that. But he found a way recently to self-sabotage and leave the job. You know, this job that presented itself to him at the company he worked for was a way out of poverty, right? Money was going to start increasing, guaranteed hours, a guaranteed job security, and he blew it down the drain. And Earl Nightingale had a really good um, quote. I can't remember what book it was in. I actually heard an audio with his voice talking about this. He said that every man and woman in this world is exactly where they want to be. No matter how much their logical mind tries to argue, at the subconscious level, they're comfortable being where they're at. And I've given exercises uh, talking about this in other videos where you would want to figure out what is the hidden payoff in playing this character, right? Because there's always a subconscious hidden payoff. So, for example, uh, let's just pretend I was journaling um, and doing this with, with these two subjects, love and money. And so we'll, we'll pretend I'm this guy, right? The limerence and the money issues. Well, you know, when I was young, um, I didn't receive the type of love that I needed to from my mom and dad. And the first person or thing that I'm going to learn about love from, especially as a child, is my primary caregivers. So 
I learned very young at a subconscious level that love is not safe. Love equals painful. It's not available to me. So I might as well keep it away from me because it leads to pain. Money. Um, we grew up very poor and my parents were always stressed about money. And as a child, I learned to match the emotions of my parents or caregivers in order to survive. So when mom and dad are stressed about money, I'm stressed about money. Money brings fear. So I'm going to keep money away because money brings fear. So you see, something that you can do that can really help you is to journal around what is the subconscious payoff in playing this character. That's what a subconscious set point is. When something is outside of your subconscious comfort zone or the set point zone, you will always find a way to self-sabotage and to keep it away from you. Another example of this, if you wanted to think about it this way, is somebody who holds on to an abandonment wound, right, and gets into a relationship. Well, eventually they're going to smother that um, SP too much and they're going to self-sabotage and the SP is going to go away just reinforcing what they were already believing about self, which is I'm abandoned. Um, I think one of the hardest things about manifesting for people to accept or realize, because I can definitely see this in my own life too, especially when I first started doing this, is that a lot of people want the world to change or want what they want to show up while still being the same person who produced the old results. So it's like, I want this to show up, but I want to be the same person who manifested the old, right? And that's not how manifesting works. As above, so below, as within, so without. This world, the inner world, will transform first ever before the outer does. So yeah, I just wanted to make this video you know, if any of you can look back on your life and look at something that maybe you self-sabotaged, because you probably can see it pretty clearly in hindsight. I know I can definitely see areas in life, you know, in my past where I had self-sabotaged things because it was outside of a, a subconscious set point or a comfort zone. And really ask you, well, what was the subconscious payoff in holding on to that character and playing that character? Because always remember this, guys. As painful as it can seem sometimes, you have to remember that these, these characters, these identities, these set points that you've built at the subconscious level, you have to remember that these were protection mechanisms built in your past. This isn't your subconscious trying to sabotage you and hate you because you know it doesn't want you to live the life you want to live. Something was deemed a danger to your safety and then this was built in order to keep you safe. So really looking in what is the payoff in holding on to that character? Well, it's safe to keep love away from me because it's painful. I learned in my past it's painful. Um, it's safe to keep people away from me because when I was in school, people always made fun of me. So people aren't safe. So I need to be a loner, right? Because people are mean, just something like that. You definitely want to journal around that and figure out what the payoff is in playing that character and then really ask yourself if you're willing to let that go. So yeah, I'm going to end that video right there. But uh, if anyone is interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching or courses, I'll leave those in the description down below.